and welcome to Ion Africa. I'm Clarice Fortuné, our top stories. A dialogue practically mute in Senegal as most of the candidates snubbed President Macky Sall's talks to end weeks of political turmoil. Macky Sall, meanwhile, announces a general amnesty for political prisoners. Our France 24 reporters in North Kivu get access to a hospital overwhelmed by a growing number of wounded people caught in a crossfire between M23 rebels and a Congolese army. A British wins the Tour de Rwanda, one of the most popular and hardest cycling competition on the continent. But we start in Senegal, where a national dialogue is underway to determine the framework for the country's presidential election. The vote was initially due to take place over the weekend. President Saul says a new election date can only be set once the dialogue is complete. But most of the candidates boycotted the talks. Sam Bradpis is in Dakar. <laughs> Senegal's so-called national dialogue began on Monday. Most of the attendees were allies of President Macky Sall, but those who had their candidacies rejected by the Constitutional Council and religious figures were also present. President Sall set out his vision to a packed audience. In the history of nations, there are moments of political adversity which need to be resolved through dialogue. My will and my dearest wish is to hold the presidential election as soon as possible. In other words, before the rainy season. At the heart of this national dialogue is the question of when the election will be held. Among the candidates, there are those who want the election to be held in May or June. I haven't heard anyone talk about August or October. There's a difference of a matter of days or weeks. We want to create competition between the different actors. 16 out of 19 presidential candidates have boycotted the national dialogue and have requested that the Constitutional Council force the president to set an election date immediately. He is holding a dialogue that is just about slowing down the election. That is why we have come to the authority that regulates the electoral process to demand that a date is fixed. The Constitutional Council must anticipate the risk of crisis when it takes into account the fact that Macky Sall could bring us to the end of his term without a new president being chosen. The national dialogue will continue on Tuesday and it's only after these discussions are finished that the president has said he would unveil a new date for the presidential election here in Senegal. Niger's border with Benin remains closed two days after ECOWAS said it was lifting some of the sanctions imposed on the country after last year's military coup. The West African bloc had suspended trade with Niger in July, sending food prices skyrocketing and sparking major power cuts but it now appears ready to renew dialogue with the country's military government. Laurent Bestacher has more. In this Niamey street market, vendors and shoppers have been feeling the pinch of economic sanctions imposed by ECOWAS. The bloc's decision to lift its embargo on Niger was greeted with relief in the capital and sent some business owners like El Haji Hassan Sabu scrambling to make up for lost time. We import fresh food, so we were forced to halt operations. We couldn't go through Burkina Faso because it added two or three extra days of transit. It won't be easy to make up for our losses after six months of suspended activity. Citing a desire to renew dialogue, ECOWAS said it was lifting sanctions on Niger, Mali and Guinea this weekend. And while the three countries remained suspended from the West African bloc, the move signaled a willingness to restore strained diplomatic ties. In Niger, the announcement sparked mixed reactions. Some residents were still reeling from an embargo that severely impacted the economy, while others appeared ready to turn a new leaf. I think this is a motivation for all Nigerians to really work in harmony with our ECOWAS allies. They have been a bit strict with us, 
But since they have changed their stance, I believe we should forgive each other. Yet it remained to be seen whether Niger's government would seize the olive branch extended by ECOWAS. The country's military junta said last month it was leaving the bloc after forming a new economic alliance with Mali and Burkina Faso. Meanwhile, Guinea's capital city came to a standstill as workers take part in a nation nationwide strike. Two youths were shot dead in Conakry in sporadic clashes. A confederation of the main unions urged public and private sectors to strike for the release of a prominent media activist, lower food prices and an end to media censorship. Schools, shops, markets and roads were empty as youths set up barricades. In eastern DRC, people from the Masisi and Rutshuru regions of North Kivu province are trapped by the escalating violence. The severe humanitarian crisis triggered by clashes between M23 rebels and the Congolese army is getting worse. Our team had this exclusive access to an hospital overwhelmed by a growing number of wounded people caught in a crossfire. Crying and groans fill this hospital ward. The signs of excruciating pain. This 18-year-old boy is going through hell. Wounded by a shell, doctors are trying to save his leg. At the moment, we have serious cases that we weren't used to seeing. It's rare to see amputees. At Ndosho Hospital in Goma, wounded civilians are pouring in. One operation follows another. OK, let's go to the operating room. More than 300 patients have been treated here since February 7th, the date of the latest M23 rebel offensive. That's five times the usual number. To cope with this influx of patients, the surgical team has been beefed up, going from two teams working in operating theatres to three. We have an average of 25 operations a day, without counting emergencies. Yesterday, for example, we were here from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. We have gunshot and shrapnel wounds. In the corridors, women and children wait to be operated upon. Others recover from their injuries. This is to realign the bone. In the room next door is Renia, who has also been displaced. A shell wounded her in the chest as she was preparing to flee a displacement camp on the outskirts of Goma, where she'd taken refuge. I feel awful. My husband and child were wounded by a bomb and died in Sake Hospital on my baby's birthday. I was almost dead when they brought me here, but they operated me. We fled because we were afraid of dying, but even when we took refuge, death found us. Despite the mourning and the pain, those who have escaped the fighting maintain hope for a better future. Yet they share a common feeling, that of being trapped in the cycle of conflict that has plagued Eastern Congo for the better part of 30 years. Now a word of sport, the Tour de Ronda concluded its 16th edition this Sunday, the biggest cycling competition on the continent with eight days of highly physical stages. About 30 riders dropped out and ultimately it's the British Joseph Blackmore, who ended up with the famous yellow jersey. Clément de Roma followed the race from the capital, Kigali. The Thousand Hills haven't been kind to African riders this year. After eight challenging stages across the country, the Tour du Rwanda was finally won by a 21-year-old British rider, Joseph Blackmore. Last year, it was Eritrean Enoch Molubran who stood atop the podium. One of his compatriots, Yeman Dawit, the first African in the race this year, is only 10th in the rankings riding for a German team. The Tour is attracting more and more overtrained Western teams, sending uh, their young talents to face the altitude and winding roads. Despite this fierce competition, randoms have held their ground at home. Their top rider is 15th in the rankings and the national team refuses to settle there. So when you're riding with uh, the big riders like Kiss from, we get more experience and then to respect and then to get motivation. You know sometimes when you are staying with the big riders, stay behind you, you attack, he follow, he attack, you follow. Sometimes make you motivation to work hard. 
our purpose now is to finish and to get some good result on the world champ. We want to fighting for that to be the best country in Africa and then to fighting to the high podium. Yeah, it's our goal. Never give up. Three Rwandan riders made it into the top 20 this year and held their own against better trained and equipped Western athletes. As major European teams show increasing interest in this race, it's because they are preparing for the Road World Championship set to be held for the first time in Rwanda, but more importantly, for the first time on the African continent in September 2025. And now to the Berlin Film Festival, where French Senegalese director Mati Diop was awarded a prestigious Golden Bear. His fil her film, Dahomey, delves into France's recent returning of treasures to Benin, artworks looted by French colonial troops. Catherine Kedia Clifford has more. Golden Bear for best film goes to the movie Dahomey by Mati Diop. A golden bear for French Senegalese filmmaker Mati Diop for her film about returning treasures looted by the West in former colonies. It's, it's, it's more than cinema, it's more than making a movie, it's a political gesture. This honors me, this honors my team, this honors the, the, the realities and people who this film talk, talk about. It's a light put on, on an injustice that needed to be shared and, and discussed and, and, and uh, and now it belongs to the audience. So, du coup, j'ai grandi dans l'ignorance de ce que mon patrimoine, ma culture, mon éducation, ma vie, mon âme est resté à l'extérieur pendant des siècles. It's a choice in line with the festival's political roots. Dahomey tells the story of France's return of 26 works of art to Benin in 2021, looted in 1892 by French colonial troops. Treasures from the Kingdom of Dahomey were kept at the Musée de Quai in Paris. Thousands of African works of art from the colonial era remain on display in Europe's leading museums to this day. We can either get rid of the past as an unpleasant burden that only hinders our evolution, or we can take the responsibility of it, using it as a basis to keep us moving forward. Dahomey is only the second African film to win the Berlinale's Golden Bear, following the South African film Carmen de Kailicha in 2005. Congratulations, Mati Diop. Thank you for watching Ion Africa. More international news coming up on France 24.